So we're going to use, if we have it, a folded towel or a folded throw blanket. So I just have this quilt. And again, I've already folded it twice. I folded it in half. I folded it again. So I have this longer rectangular shape. Depending on how much lift we want will depend on what we use. You can be flat to the floor and you can just have a little support behind your head as well. So don't fret. If you want to do this additional lift for the chest, you'll choose either your blanket or your top. If you have a bigger blanket like this, I'm going to take it and I'm going to do a trifold. So I'm going to take one long end, fold it over about a third. It's easier to do if I have it flat on the floor, but I want to show you. And then fold it again, that other third. And I'm going to end up with this long, skinny rectangle. This may be just an inch or two in height. So I'm going to take that towards the top of my mat or the area of the space. And that is going to end up supporting my mid back up my spine to the back of my head. So it's going to give me a little bit of elevation there. If that seems like a little much, take your bath towel. We have just folded it in half long ways. I'm going to bring the two short ends together, smaller rectangle, and this time just fold it in half so I have this rectangle. So it's not as thick. It doesn't matter how long it is as long as it makes contact with the middle of the back and the back of the head. So I could also take that instead of the blanket. So once we have that set up, I would also recommend, this is just a pillow off my bed, taking that to the front of the mat or where your legs are going to be. We'll work our way down to the ground here. I'm not sitting on the blanket, I'm sitting on the floor and I'm gonna leave a little space between the short end of that blanket. I'm gonna swing my legs over my pillow here. I wanna lengthen out that low back a little bit. I'm just gonna ease myself down onto my blanket here. If you need to float up the hips for a moment, we want to loosen up the clothing so we don't have any creases or wrinkles on our low back. I want to make sure again that head is supported. I'm going to rock my head out here. My legs are just extended flopping over my pillow. The feet are nice and wide. I am just letting the feet flop open. So sometimes laying flat on the floor can be challenging for some of us in that low back. So that's why we use the pillow. Another option is to simply bend the knees up to the ceiling, plant the feet, and we allow the weight of the knees to come together with or without a pillow underneath the crease of the knees. And that will also help tension out of the low back. Once we're here, we're gonna cactus our arms. So that means we're gonna take our arms, bend at the elbows, and drop our elbows up from our shoulders, and then try to let the backs of the hands flop down to the ground. So you can imagine like goal posts or the arms of a cactus sticking out to the sides. We might notice that the backs of our hands don't easily touch the ground, and that's okay. They can just kind of be hovering there. That's usually due to tight muscles across the front of the chest and the shoulders. However, after a few deep breaths and with the help of our friend gravity, those muscles start to traction out, might open up a little bit more and the hands might come a little closer to the ground. If for whatever reason that's not comfortable, you may simply just rest your arms down beside the body with the palms up. So once we get into a comfortable position, let's close our eyes. Let's take a nice deep breath in and out through the nose. Inhale into the body. And let out a nice exhale and just feel the whole body start to relax. All the muscles start to relax. Let's do that again. Inhaling through the nose. A nice big exhale back out through the nose. Feel the joints loosen, the body soften. Exhaling away any tension or stress from our day. 
let it go. So I always like to start my yoga with some centering, reconnecting to the body, the breath and the spirit. So we'll take a moment here to mentally scan our bodies this evening. Maybe we've been doing a lot of doing throughout our day. So now we're pressing the pause button. We're gonna mentally move through our whole body starting at the top of the head and working all the way out and down to our fingertips and toes. And as we're scanning our body, we're consciously letting go of any lingering tension or tightness we might find. So relax all the little muscles across the face. Relax the mouth, tongue, and jaw. Relaxing down the arms into the fingertips. Scan and relax all the way down those legs into the ankles, feet, and toes. Another thing that we do here is we take some inventory. So we recognize and honor all the areas of our body, especially the areas that maybe need a little extra TLC tonight. It's important that we use kind words and honor ourselves and our bodies. So when we find those areas, maybe in our neck, our shoulders, maybe around our back or our hips, we pause on those areas, we breathe into them and we let them relax remembering that we will listen to them and modify and adjust accordingly. Now let's begin to spread the awareness to the breath. So our breath is our guide. It is also a bridge between the mind and the body. And it's so important that we take time every day to breathe deeply into the body. So at first, just watch the body breathe. Watch the body breathe in. And watch the body breathe out. Now we are trying to breathe as smoothly as possible in and out through the nose. I know some of you said you're experiencing some allergies and stuffiness. Um, you can always have a box of tissues nearby and clear your sinuses as needed, but just do your breath to breathe through the nose. We'll begin to notice on our inhales, the body naturally expands. So you might notice the belly rise, the rib cage expands. We can fill the body up around the chest, the side body, even the back. And on our exhales, the body naturally contracts. So you might notice that the belly sinks back down, that the ribs come a little closer towards each other and the chest softens. Continue to observe the breath, inhaling, filling the body up, filling ourselves up with some fresh air, prana and energy this evening. And those exhales are just as important to clean everything out, to exhale away any stress, tension, or worries. We let it go. Let's all cycle through one more round of breathing here. This round of breath, we're gonna try to make it our biggest breath of our day yet. So the next time we get to an inhale, take your time to fill yourself up. Breathe in, let that belly expand like a balloon. Keep filling the body up all the way to the brim in the throat. When we're ready for that exhale, gently start to release the breath. And same thing here, we'll try to make this our biggest exhale of our day yet. So when we get to this exhale, Gently contract the abdominal muscles. Feel like you're pushing that air out to get all the stale old air and energy out. At the bottom of that exhale, we're let go of trying to control and follow the breath. The breath will wander away wherever it wants to go. Start to notice the physical body again. 
All the contact points with the body and the floor or any props below it. And then we're gonna start to wake our bodies up. So we'll give our toes a little wiggle, wake the fingertips up, gently rock the head side to side to help release the neck. Next breath in, let's see if we can stretch our arms even farther overhead. So if you're on a little bit of a prop, just be mindful how that feels for the shoulders. So we're just continuing to stretch and reach our arms overhead as if we were reaching our fingertips to the opposite wall. Let's also give our legs a little bit of a stretch. So straighten them out. If they're up on a pillow, you can point and flex the feet. The feet might even come up off the ground a couple of inches here. Maybe stretch the right side a little bit longer than the left. Give our left side a little bit more of a stretch. And then big breath in, let's spread our fingers, come back to center, flex the feet, spread the toes. And on the exhale, relax. Gently slide the arms all the way back down beside the body. Walk the feet in towards the body. And again, depending on how much of a lift we have behind our back, Carefully start to draw the knees up towards the body, one knee at a time. We may take our hands behind our thighs and the knee crease here and just do a little rock across the low back. We may also place the hands on our shin bones and do a little rock on our back. Now bring one arm right beside the head and we're gonna roll onto our side, all the way off of our props. This is called sleeping baby pose or Supta Balasana. We'll rest our head on the arm underneath it. Our knees are bent up in a fetal position and we'll place our hand in front of our heart. And we wanna pause here for a moment just to give our blood pressure a moment to regulate. From here, turn the heart towards the ground. You can extend your top leg forward. It sometimes helps the body come up. Use your hands. And we're gonna slowly lift ourselves up and work our way into a seated position at this point. Now sitting on the floor can be challenging, especially if we're not used to it. The most important thing is that we maintain a nice tall posture. In order to do that, 99% of us will need to sit up on something. So if you have your blanket or towel behind you, I already had my long rectangle. I just took it and pulled it in half. So now I have a smaller rectangle, but it's firm and it's a little bit thicker. And I can take that behind me. If that's not enough, I can add a pillow or a folded towel. Ideally, a firmer seat is more beneficial because when we come into our seat, we'd like our sit bones to be evenly weighted and balanced. I actually have this little meditation cushion. It's firm, it's about four inches in thickness and I usually use that. If you happen to have yoga blocks, you can use those things. If you're near a piece of furniture, you're always welcome to sit up on the edge of a chair or a sofa and just plant your feet evenly on the ground. Those of us coming into that seated position on the floor, we can take our easy cross, it's called Sukhasana and Sanskrit. And if the knees need additional support, again, our towels and blankets can be tucked underneath those knees. Now, some of you might have yoga props at home and have yoga blocks, you can use those as well. Most important thing is that our spine is upright and long. So if you come into this position and your knees are way up here and your back is rounded, we need to sit up higher, okay? Be, be mindful of that, because if we're thrown out of alignment, it really won't help us in the long run. Once we're in our seated position, again, sit up tall. We're gonna float our arms out beside the body here, turning our palms up to the sky and taking another nice big breath in through the nose and reaching those arms up to the ceiling. Just a nice big stretch. Turn the palms out. And exhale, float the fingertips back down to the ground. We're gonna add a little neck stretch with this movement. Inhale, palms up, reach up, gently gaze upwards. We're not just dropping the head back, we're trying to keep the neck long. On the exhale, palms down, fingertips to the floor, 
without rounding the upper back, draw the chin towards the chest. This will stretch out the root of the neck. Let's do that one more time. Inhale up, bringing our drishti or our gaze up towards the ceiling. Exhale, palms down, fingertips to the floor. Now drop the chin to the chest. Hold here, shrug the shoulders from the ears. Let the arms hang heavy like wet noodles. Inhale, roll the right ear to the right shoulder and look forward, giving our neck a little stretch. Exhale, roll the chin down. Inhale, left ear to left shoulder. Arms are just hanging heavy. Exhale down. One more time to each side. Inhale, right ear to right shoulder. Exhale down. And inhale, left ear to left shoulder. Look forward. Exhale, chin comes down. Turn those palms back out. Inhale, reach the arms up. Float the head back to neutral. Seated twist. On this exhale, rotate the body to the right. Let the hands come back down towards the ground. Your front hand may find your opposite knee. The back hand, maybe just the fingertips graze the floor behind us. There's really no weight in our hands. I'm using the strength around my core to hold my spine long. Now I'm gonna continue to rotate and twist through the upper back, the neck and the head. I want us to open our eyes really wide and look to that furthest point behind us. Inhale, bring everything back up to center. Body faces forward, breathing in, arms up. Keep the length in the spine. Exhale, twisting to our left. Fingertips float down. Maybe we find that opposite knee. Now continue that rotation up the upper back the neck, open the eyes nice and wide, peek behind the body. Inhale, big breath in, bring everything back up to center. Exhale, one more time, twist to the right, all the way up. So twists do help work our digestive system, they massage our internal organs. Inhale, back up to center. One more time to the left. They also help bring out tension through the neck, shoulders, and back. Just move gently. And then inhale, come back to center. This time, bring the palms to touch and exhale to our center. So those of us sitting cross-legged, we're gonna do one more movement here for our neck, shoulders, and back. But I'd like us to switch up the cross we do tend to sit the same way each time and this will just keep balance in the hips. So we'll place the opposite foot in front. If it's available, find those sit bones, add extra support for the body as needed. Sit up nice and tall. Let's start this time by floating the fingertips out to the sides of the body. This pose is lateral extension for the spine. We should do it every day. Inhale, right arm up. Now we wanna keep the right sit bone anchored. On the exhale, we're sliding along an invisible wall. Maybe we just go 10 degrees, 15 degrees. It's up to you and your body. On the inhale, use your muscles to pull you back up to center. Switch arms. Exhale, lean to the right. Keep that left sit bone rooted, big stretch for the side body. Inhale up. One more time to the left. Now we can bring our gaze down to our bottom hand and that will stretch out the neck a little bit more. Inhale, pull yourself up through center. Switch arms and exhale one more time to the right. Again, you can look down to that bottom hand for just a little bit different of a stretch. On our next inhale, we'll meet back up to center. Bring the palms together and exhale to our center. So we'll give our legs a quick stretch here from our seated position. Help your knees up, stretch those legs out one at a time. 
And you can have your knees bent, no problem, and just try to straighten one leg, straighten the other. You can point and flex or wiggle the feet. You can massage and rub down those legs, just getting the blood flow back into our legs. That's beneficial for our circulation into that part of our body. So we are gonna make a transition now into what's called a tabletop pose. Um, this will be like a kneeling crouched position. So some of us are gonna want extra cushion for our knees and I'll show you what we can do for that. Take your time, there's no hurry. Whenever we're transitioning, we just wanna do that mindfully as well. So we'll flip ourselves around here on the ground and we're turning our body into a tabletop position. So my arms are the front legs of the table and my thigh, leg, thigh bones, the back legs. My back is the tabletop. If we want that extra cushion for our knees, if you have a yoga mat, grab it about halfway, hold it back maybe four inches and place your kneecaps on that extra cushion. Or if we have our blanket or our towel, you can unfold it a couple times until it gives you a little bit of cushion and place that underneath your knees and your shin bones. Fingers should be spread nice and wide here. We're gonna stack our hands right underneath our shoulders. So our hands are almost as wide as our yoga mat. We want our head to feel right in line with our spine. Again, knees right underneath our hips. You may point the toes or have your toes tucked under whatever feels best. Now this is weight bearing exercise. So this is actually really healthy for our bones as preventative for arthritis and osteoporosis. So this is a nice exercise to bear weight, even without moving the body, just doing that um, bone to bone compression. This next pose is called cat cow. It is extension and flexion for the back. Another movement we should do every day. We'll follow the breath. On the inhale, relax the belly. Lift the tailbone up and feel like you're stretching your spine forward and upwards through the crown of the head. Now exhale, scoop that tailbone under, draw the belly in and round the back up to the ceiling. Try to draw your chin to your chest and look to the belly button. Inhale, we do a little anterior tilt in the pelvis, swaying the low back lengthening the spine, gazing forward. On the exhale, I scoop the tail under, pull the belly in, round the back, and try to peek at my belly button. Now I want you to connect to your rhythm. Try to allow that breath to initiate this movement and feel like it's rolling like a wave through those hips, vertebrae by vertebra, up and down the back. So this pose alone can help work out that tension and tightness around the shoulders and the back of the neck. Move as easily as possible. Get that fluidity into your practice. And then let's come into a neutral position. Next pose is child's pose or balasana. This is gonna be a big stretch for our lower back around the hip area again, and maybe neck and shoulders for some of us. In child's pose, I'm gonna recommend we do wide knee child's pose, and we might need additional support behind our sit bones. So this does put some uh, purposeful compression on the knee joint, so some of us might need to modify. Open the knees wider than the hips, and try to touch the big toes together, flattening the feet out to the floor. So the fuller version of the pose, we draw the sit bones back and down to our heels, sitting all the way back. I extend my fingertips forward to the front corners of my mat, and then I melt the belly, heart, and head to the ground, bowing the head to the floor. Now, when I taught my first yoga class this morning, my head was a good six inches away from the ground. When I wake up in the morning, I can barely move. I have a lot of stiffness in my joints and tightness in my muscles. So if that's the case and the head doesn't easily touch the ground for us tonight, simply stack your fists under your forehead or take your pillow or your folded blanket or if you have a yoga block under the forehead and give your head some support. That's totally fine. 
And those of you that are unable to sit back on your heels, you can take pillows behind your knee creases or folded up blankets, and you can sit back on those so the knees aren't as compressed as much. Now, child's pose is a wonderful pose to help reduce stress and anxiety. It can be beneficial if you're feeling fatigue and have headaches. And it's also a pose that is beneficial for restlessness and insomnia. So we're just allowing the body to sink towards the earth, allowing that head to be grounded. And it's a nice big stretch for that low back and those hips. So wherever you are, take one more full breath in this pose. Next inhale, if the hands are closer to the body, we can bring them further out or closer in, whatever we need. We'll float our head up. We're gonna come back to tabletop. Another benefit we get for child's pose is the release of the pose. It's actually beneficial for our knees when we release the pose and we let the blood rush back through our legs. So hands are as wide as the shoulders. Draw the low belly in to stabilize the low back and just stretch the right foot straight back from the hip. Follow the foot to the floor. We can shift our weight back to that heel as if we're trying to press it to the ground and we should feel a really nice opening in the back of that knee. Try to keep equal weight in the hands. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale, let's bring that right knee down and let's give that left leg a nice big stretch. Follow the foot to the floor. Press that heel back towards the ground to intensify the stretch. Feel the opening in the back of the knee. Big breath in. Exhale, knee down. The next pose we're going into is an inversion. So this is another nice pose that can help with fatigue and headaches. And thus, if you're already having a headache, it might um, compromise that a little bit. And we also want to be mindful of heart conditions and blood pressure. So look. Staying here is an option. Sitting back in a child's pose is always an option. We can lift up in a down dog, and if it's not working for us today, come back to one of these poses. So for downward facing dog, tuck the toes under, walk the hands about one hand's distance forward. So our arms are now at more of an angle. Draw that low belly in towards the body, press into the ground, and we're gonna to try to float our knees our hips up and then shift our weight to the back of the mat, down the backs of the legs. So we're trying to turn our body into an inverted V shape. If you get here and you're like, nope, just come right back down, sit it back to your child's pose, or you can do your cat cows again and tabletop, no big deal. Those of us upside down, Adha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Heels don't touch, no problem. Let's bend our knees a little bit and let's inhale, try to lift our heels up as high as we can, looking at the crease of our toes. On the exhale, drop your right heel down and bend the left knee to give the back of the right leg another big stretch. Inhale, heels up. Exhale, drop the left heel down, bend the right knee to give the back of that leg a big stretch. Inhale, heels up. Exhale, lower the heels towards the ground. We're just gonna try to take one more breath here. Now, this is another big transition. I want you to do it safely. You can come up however works best for your body. Or we're going to try to look forward and baby step our hands to our feet and our feet to our hands. Now we can choose to stay upside down a little bit longer, but we need to protect our backs. We're just going to come up for a moment, but let me show you. If you're protecting your low back, bend your knees and place your elbows on your thighs or even your hands. So you're more in a squatted position. We want to take our time to come up from our inversion, especially if we probably have low blood pressure. Um, from fasting. So it's going to be important to really take our time as we come up. If you're upside down in a forward fold, you can also reach towards the toes. We don't need to touch. And you can just give your head and neck a little loosey goosey nod yes and shake no here, trying to let the weight of the world just fall off the shoulders this evening. 
Now we're all gonna bend our knees deeply and place our hands on our thighs. The fingers are turned inward. We have a nice wide stance in our feet. Tuck the chin to the chest and inhale through the nose. Inhale, 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 and slowly roll up. One vertebra at a time. Make sure you're inhaling as you come up. Your head is the very last thing that comes up. Once you're upright, if you see stars or feel lightheaded, you're gonna come right back down to the ground, okay? Now coming up from an inversion can be quite intense. So make sure you breathe in, you have your bearing here. So we should all find ourselves standing, hopefully, in our first standing pose, Tadasana or Mountain Pose. We have equal weight in our feet. Feet are parallel to each other. You just wanna stand nice and tall, feel supported through the body. Let's turn our palms forward, getting a little bit more openness through our heart. And the head is just floating on the shoulders. So no tension here again, and the neck or the face. Turn the palms out even more and take another big breath in and let's reach out to the sides of the room and all the way up to the ceiling. Take a nice big stretch. Bring the palms together and exhale, lower the hands down through our center to our heart. We're gonna add a little bit of balance for those of us that went. So when we do our balance work in yoga, we really rely heavily on our eyes. So we wanna focus the eyes on one spot. And once they're there, we wanna anchor them there. Inhale, draw a nice big circle through those arms. As we reach up, this time try to lift the heels up. Lengthen and extend all the way up from our tippy toes. Bring the palms to touch. Exhale, we lower the heels and the hands to our heart. So this is called palm tree pose. Let's try it again. Inhale. We're rising up, growing taller, taller, taller. Big stretch. And exhale, we're trying to slowly come down. It might be a little challenging at first, that's okay. We're gonna try one more. Big breath. And then exhale, we'll lower it down. So one more balance before we come back down to the ground. Let's open the feet slightly wider than the hips now. Our balancing posture is so important for our brain, our mental health. They really help improve our focus, concentration, and they're also just kind of fun. So feet are a little bit wider here. We're gonna lean our body over to the right. If you're new to balance work, be patient with yourself. We don't stand on our one leg throughout our day normally, unless you do lots of yoga. <laughs> so our right side is nice and strong. It's like a tree growing roots through the earth. As we lean to the right, we want our left leg to maybe get a little lighter. So let's start trying to lift and lower the toes of the left leg. Now you're always welcome to be close to a wall and use a wall as an assistant. If you're using a piece of furniture, just make sure your piece of furniture is stable because if it falls over, you'll fall over with it. And now let's try to hover the left foot from the floor and softly float our arms out. Like we're just trying to balance on a tightrope. And it's okay if we have to touch back down. I should be on one spot. Notice the breath. Now choose to stay here tonight. If we went a little bit more and just explore a little bit, we'll move into Tarasana or Star Pose. Flex the left foot, spread the fingers, and we lift the leg and the arms out using our muscles now, like a big shining star in the sky. Notice the breath. Take one more big breath in. On our exhale, we're just gonna try to land as softly and gracefully as possible. We'll move right back into mountain pose, keeping our focus and concentration. Try to equalize the weight through both feet. Head is relaxed on the shoulders. Inhale, reach those arms out and up. Exhale, lower the hands back to heart center. We lean to the left. 
Now the left side grows strong as it anchors through the floor. When our left song side gets strong, the right side should feel a little lighter. Try lifting and lowering the toes. Softly float the arms out here. Maybe we get into a little soft hover. Stay here, or we can find a little bit more dimension. Spread the toes, the fingers, minding our space around us, making sure we're safe, using a little bit more muscle to reach out in all four directions, big shining star, Tarasana. Take one more big breath in. And on the exhale, we'll just try to one more time land, slowly, gracefully, equalize the weight in both feet, hover the arms beside the body. Turn the palms forward. Inhale one more time, reach out and up, big stretch. Exhale, we'll bring the palms to touch and lower the hands to our heart. So for tonight's practice, instead of transitioning back and down to downward facing dog, I think where I'm just gonna have us all just sit back down to the ground might be a little bit easier for us. Um, again, you can use pieces of furniture to assist. As you're coming down to the ground, you can come down to one knee and the other knee, whatever works for you, no hurry. We'll shift our weight over to either hip. And I want us to all catch up here in a seated position. We are gonna transition onto our back. So we're gonna do some good stuff here on our back for our neck and shoulders. So we get some of that released here. If your head's gonna want a little bit of support, you can have those blankets and towels nearby. Now the safest way to come down onto our back is we need some space behind us. Just shift over to one side again. And just like we walked our hands up to a seat from the beginning, we take our hands and we walk ourselves down to one side and then we roll onto our back. So I'll give us a moment to get in this position. When we come back down onto our back, I want us to again, loosen up the clothing, make sure we don't have any creases across that low back. If we happen to have any ponytails or you need to adjust the hair so you can find the back center of the skull, go ahead and do so. Let's walk our feet in towards our body draw the belly in, and let's pull our knees in towards the body as much as we can comfortably. Hold onto the shins or behind the knee creases and rock side to side. So the next pose we'll practice is a supine spinal twist. This will help release the muscles of the back, neck, and shoulders. We keep our knees drawn in and have the feet parallel to each other. We have a tendency to wanna to place one foot on top of the other, feet parallel. Extend the arms out from the shoulders like airplane wings. On the exhale, let the knees fall over to the right hand side. Now that right thigh, that right leg might not come down to the ground. Slide your pillow or your blanket underneath that right thigh to support it if needed. And then sink the shoulders back down to the ground, especially the left shoulder. We want that left shoulder to sink into the earth. Place the right hand on the top of the left thigh if we want to deepen the twist. Turn the head to the left. And even close the eyes at this point. Start slowing the breathing down a little bit. Slow, deep breaths in and out through the nose. Relax the muscles around the face, the throat, and the shoulders. Our next inhale, bring the head and the knees back up to neutral. You can float one knee up at a time. You might wanna drop the feet to the floor for a moment, make sure you get your low back and head and spine all back in alignment. And then hug those knees back in, feet parallel to each other. Exhale, we'll let the knees fall to the left. If they don't easily touch, slide your props underneath that bottom thigh as needed. 
Right shoulder should sink back into the ground. Place the left hand on that top thigh if we want to deepen the twist. So we're just adding a gentle weight there. But we're surrendering our body to gravity. Gravity is our friend. It's gonna help ring out, just like taking a washcloth and wringing everything out. Turn the head to the right. Eyes can close. Slow, deep breath in and out through the nose. One more breath, relax the face, the throat and the shoulders. The next inhale, we'll bring the head and the knees back up to center, one at a time is fine. Drop the feet to the floor for a moment, adjust the back, the head as needed, so we're back in alignment. Draw those knees in. This time, hands behind the thighs, reaching the feet up towards the ceiling. Griparita Karani, sometimes called waterfall pose or legs up the wall pose. This is another inversion here. So we're redirecting the blood flow, circulation and energy towards our vital organs, the heart and the head. We're holding onto our legs for support. You can point and flex the feet a couple times. This is called legs up the wall pose because we often practice this pose by shimmying our bottom close to a wall and sliding the legs up a wall. So the walls doing the work and supporting the legs. This is another pose that's very beneficial for anxiety, depression, insomnia. So it's a nice pose to do at the end of our day to decompress both physically for the lower joints of the body and mentally. Next inhale, this is gonna be a big stretch. Be careful, hold on to the outer thighs. We're gonna to start to open the legs up into a V position. This is called Supta Konasan, reclining angle pose. The elbows can come to the ground. You can hold the weight of the legs so it's not too big of a stretch. Roll your ankles a few times. If you want a bigger stretch for those inner thighs, move the hands to those inner thighs. Give those legs a nice big stretch here. This can help release tension around the hips and low back as well. We'll take a big breath in. Now on this exhale, last pose is gonna be happy baby pose. What we try to do is bend the knees and our knees are as wide as our armpits. We try to flex the feet so the soles of the feet are facing the ceiling. And then we try to reach up and either take a hold of our toes or the inner arches or outside of the feet, whatever we can grab onto. If those feet are far away from us tonight, hold your hands around the outer thighs. This is a big hip stretch. Then we just let the weight of the knees fall back down towards the ground. You can add a little rocking movement here side to side. It's called happy baby. You'll often see babies in their cradles doing this position, playing with their toes and feet, enjoying their natural flexibility that we're, we're born with. Take a big breath in. This exhale, try to bring the feet together. Hands wrap around the feet or the ankles. The knees are still flared out to the sides. This time we're drawing the heels towards the pubic bone. Just another hip stretch here. This is called sometimes butterfly pose. And you have it konasan or bound angle pose. Take a deep breath in. On this exhale, move the hands to the outside of the knees. We're gonna squeeze the knees back together. We can try to reach up over our shin bones with our arms, maybe find opposite elbows or wrists tonight. If we don't find those things, just hold on to those thighs or the shins, floating the head up, nose to knees to stretch out the root of the neck again, and to give our bodies and ourselves a great big hug. 
filling ourselves up with gratitude for ourselves and our bodies, appreciating and loving ourselves and our bodies. Take a big breath in. On the exhale, we're gonna let it all go. And we're gonna let our body flop all the way back down to the ground. So we're gonna end up finishing where we started tonight, moving back into Shavasana or a final relaxation pose. If it feels comfortable to lay here flat on the floor, you can stay here with your knees bent, maybe letting them fall together or simply stretch those legs out. Feet can be nice and wide, falling open. Readjust the shoulder blades. Arm bones roll open, palms up to the ceiling. Now, if we have our pillows, our blankets nearby, and we wanna add additional cushion under the legs or behind the head, especially if we have neck stiffness and our head is falling back too much, take your folded towel or blanket, put a little pillow back there to support the neck and the head. We want our bodies to be as comfortable as possible. So in this last pose, this is where we absorb the benefits of our practice where we really get to recharge that battery, where we give ourselves permission to let go of all the doing and allow us to just simply be and breathe. I'm gonna guide us through a little bit more relaxation here. Give us a moment of some peace and quiet. I'll use my singing bowl and then guide us out of Shavasana to finish our practice together. So once you're comfortable, close the eyes, let the eyes sink into the sockets. You can rock the head side to side a couple times to release the neck and then find the very back center of the soul. Poof the cheeks up with air, stick out the tongue, yawn, whatever we need to do to release the mouth, tongue, and jaw. Let go of any expression across the face. Smooth the skin of the forehead, the brow. Relax the throat. Soften the heart and the chest. Feel the weight of the arms. Relaxing from the shoulders to the elbows to the wrists. Relax the hands and the fingertips. Relax down the back, vertebra by vertebra. Allow that low back to sink into the ground. Relax the belly completely. All of the abdominal muscles and internal organs. Notice a subtle rise and fall of the belly with the breath. And then relax the larger muscles around the hips and hip sockets, the glutes and the thighs. Feeling the weight of the legs, relaxing from the hips to the knees, knees to the ankles. Relax the feet, the toes, the space between the toes. Soften and relax the whole body. Allow the breath to become very easy, quiet, and calm. 
If the mind wanders, gently bring it back to the peaceful breath, giving ourselves permission to take just one more moment of today to let go, to feel a sense of surrender, and to simply be and breathe. So we'll very slowly come back to the natural rhythm of the breath. And gently start to breathe life back into our body. Waking up the toes, waking up the fingertips, giving our head a gentle rock side to side. Roll the wrists, roll the ankles. Next inhale, let's stretch our arms overhead. Stretch out the legs, just create as much space in the body as we can. You can stretch side to side, right to left. Point and flex those feet a couple times. On the ex next exhale, float those arms down, step the feet in. Draw those knees back into the body. Gentle rock side to side. And then one more time, bring one arm right beside the ear. Roll all the way over onto that side, cradling the head on the arm, allowing the top hand to fall to the floor in front of the heart, pausing for a moment. This is a nice time to set a positive intention, mantra, or affirmation to take with us today off of our mat into our evening. And then keeping those eyes soft or closed, you can turn the heart towards the ground, stretch out that top leg, and we're gonna push into the ground and use our hands to bring the body back up. We are gonna revisit any comfortable seated posture and finish our practice with just a couple more breaths together tonight. So if you want to come back to a cross-legged position, prop yourself up, whatever works for you. Try to sit up as tall as possible through the crown of the head and be mindful of our surroundings. We'll float those arms back out beside the body. Turning the palms up to the ceiling, let's take another big breath in through the nose. Float those arms all the way back up overhead and let's gather up everything we need for the rest of our night. Turn those palms out, 
Exhale, float those fingertips all the way back down to the ground and let go of all that other junk you don't need to make. One more time, inhaling, arms up. Bringing those palms to touch and exhaling, hands to heart. We'll humbly bow our head down to our heart to honor and thank ourselves, our bodies, each other, and remembering to be grateful to anyone else that made it possible for us all to come together tonight and to practice yoga together tonight. If you'd like to join me in the Om Shanti Mantra, please do so. It means peace, peace, peace. Taking a deep breath in through the nose to begin. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. And I thank all of you, Shavana, Rohit, Muslim Space, Austin Yoga Tree. Thank you all so much for being here this evening. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to stick around and you have questions or comments, I am more than willing to chat with you. And <sighs> that was lovely, Joanne, as always. How'd that feel for you? I felt so relaxed. Um, how is everyone else feeling? Good, good. Thank I'm you. Glad it felt good. Thank you so much. I've not uh, done yoga for more than a year due to COVID, and I loved it so much. Thank you. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. We'll be here again next week at the same time. So if you can make it, please join us. We're also, they're posting the videos of class. So you can share the video, you can take the class again, and the more that we can do for ourselves, the better. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I mean, you can find the videos on our Muslim Space YouTube channel. We have the ones from last year as well. So oh, okay. uh, each week when we do it, we post it. So you have you know options available to you. Uh, we have four classes from last year. We posted last week's also. This week's will go up um, as soon as you know we have it. So you can continue your practice throughout the week if you you know if you want to keep okay. stretching. Thank you. Yeah, happy to do it. Good night and happy uh, iftar to everybody. Bye. Thank you. So Bye. Much Thank you for being here. Bye and thank you so much. You are welcome. Have a nice evening. I feel like I have all my parts back. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I hope we got some release out of there. Yes. I can tell you just from the beginning of my day to now, it's incredible how much the yoga helps. <laughs> thank you so much, Shubana and Rahit for organizing. Oh, pleasure to do it for so glad when folks can join and you know uh, for folks who do it on their own time uh, we hope it brings benefit and we're so lucky to have joanne and austin yoga tree so absolutely, absolutely. bye everyone goodbye goodbye bye you guys thank you i hope that felt okay